CBS 42 News anchor Art Franklin back live now at Legion Field with the president of the Alabama Sports Council. Art. And, and Sherry, thank you. I want to get right over to Jane Harmon right now and talk about this. She says that they have secured the $3.6 million to, to make this happen. If I can use a football analogy, how close are we getting across the goal line? I think we're about the five-yard line, Art. Uh, a lot of people in this community worked really hard on this project. It's a great example of what can happen when we work together as a community. Uh, they're working on the finer points of the contract, but an entire football league is going to bring its entire season to our community over a 12-week period, which is unprecedented. I was going to ask you, we have not seen anything else like this except for the NBA bubble, similar to what we're going to have here with eight teams being right here in Birmingham. Well, they got the idea, uh, the USFL, from the NBA bubble, but they're not necessarily doing it for COVID reasons. They're doing it because they want to make sure they start right, keep costs under control. They have plenty of funding to make at least a three-year commitment to this league, uh, which is something the previous leagues have lacked. You have national television for all 43 games emanating from right here in Birmingham, and half of those 43 games will, will be broadcast on network television. So just great exposure for our community. 50,000 room nights from the league to, to put their players and staffs up for that period of time, huge economic impact for the retail sector here in Jefferson County. You say at the five yard line, when do you think we get to the finish line? The attorneys are working on it now, so who knows, but it should be fairly quick. Look, they're going to start uh, preseason March the 1st with practices, so they've got to do a draft. There's so much football work that the USFL must do, um, so time is precious, uh, but, but we can make it happen as a community. Just a great thing for, for Birmingham and Jefferson County. And that's Protective Stadium also. Legion Field in play as well. Uh, Le Legion Field will have its share of games. The majority of the games will be at Protective Stadium. This will be a great practice facility and the host to at least six games right here at Historic Legion Field. Jane, great job. Everybody's excited and looking forward to this. Thanks, Art. All right, Jane Hallman with the Alabama. All right, so you heard it there. That was Gene Hallman of the Alabama Sports Council. He was at Legion Field. We appreciate CBS 42. We got a full video of there, an article on XFL News Hub. So we all know the $3.6 million needed for the USFL to get underway. They were able to finalize that whole agreement. He said now it's looking like the, now it's in the hands of the lawyers. But this was the interesting part that he talked about. Look, they're going to start the preseason March 1st with practices. So they've got to do a draft. That's in his opinion, they have to do a draft. Now that we have the location in place, next up the USFL to run the league, who is going to run the league? Who is in charge? What are the kind of coaches will come on board? If there's an XFL player draft, where is that going to happen? I mean, if it does happen, it would need to happen in February, and that's only four months away. So we assume that the USFL are going to follow the spring league model so it didn't take them long to kind of get things going and start playing games. But time is running, and it's time we should start here. I would assume we would start hearing some more USFL news coming over the next several weeks because they are looking to start practices, practice, March 1st. Some other interesting USFL news to think about first uh, of course, is that the funding has been completed. We talked about that. So it's going to be in a hub city. All these games will take place in the spring. March or April 15th was kind of the date that we had heard with games televised on Fox, FS1, NBC USA, and NBC's Peacock. You notice that uh, Mr. Hallman talked about how half of the games were uh, going to be on broadcast television. So what makes that makes me think that you're going to see a lot of these games on NBC's Peacock as well. So maybe you would get one or two games, you know, on a Saturday or on a, on, a, on a Saturday and Sunday, and then the other games on Peacock. It'll be really interesting if our man Mike Mitchell can get out there. We've been trying on the CFL side of things is to get some streaming numbers from ESPN Plus when it comes to CFL games. Uh, no one has really been forthright with that kind of data. It would be interesting what NBC does when it, 
in t- I would love to see the, the comparison, what kind of streaming numbers either one would get. And we noticed during the XFL season when games were on Fox and ABC, the numbers were higher, traffic to the site was higher. Even when it was on ESPN, it did well. But when you started getting to that, like Fox Sports one second channel and these kind of second and third tier channels, it you know the viewership had definitely plummeted. So it'll be interesting to see how that goes there. That's pretty much what's going on. We've got the season's going to take place. They've raised the money, and we're going to kick off Friday, April 15th. So there you go. So basically half the games, you'll get a game probably on Friday and Saturday on network television and then streaming, you know, probably on Peacock or who knows, Fox Sports 1 plus 2 or whatever the heck they have going on there. Other USFL interesting news, trademarks. So we've been following the trademarks of all kind of things that are going on with the USFL. They just trademarked this past week the Mobile Stallions. I thought this was interesting because part of the deal for the USFL to play in Birmingham was that Birmingham was going to get a team. Cool. Hey, we'll do this thing. We'll, We'll, you know, front some of this cash so we can have a team in our league. And then eventually after... Year two, when some of the teams start to play in their own cities. And then on year three, when everybody is out in their own cities, if you didn't hear that piece, that's been talked about. That's part of the proposals that year one, it will be a hub city. Year two, half of the teams will there'll be basically four teams, maybe if they expand, will be in that location. But a couple uh, other franchises will be out in their cities. And then by year three, it will be spread out. So that season tickets and that whole kind of revenue. So it's kind of this slow build versus coming out of the gate hot, like AAF and the XFL two point era. And it looks like the XFL three point era, but they have a whole different kind of thing that they're going on. But I found it interesting. And why would the mobile stallion stallions of all things get trademark now mobile Alabama is three hours away from Birmingham. So it's not like, uh, you know, it's just a neighboring city where they potentially would have games or people from Birmingham would be like, yeah, that's cool. Like, you can take our Stallions name. So just to found that very odd, there's two stadiums that they can play at. There's no question, you know, there is places to play there. But I just found that piece interesting that they would – that the NSFL Enterprise Co., which is owned by Fox Sports, would want to trademark the Mobile Stallions name unless it was leveraged to use against Birmingham to come up with the money because they could be like, well, hey, if you're not going to, uh, maybe that's what it was now that I think about it. Hey, if you're not going to play ball, we'll go three hours away in Alabama and set up a team there. So maybe that's that was their little kind of nudge to get everybody going. Uh, hey, man, you got to play the game to get what you need. I just thought that was a little bit interesting behind the scenes there. And finally, our friends from the NFL have taken issue with the USFL's Michi- uh, Michigan Panthers trademark. So we had talked about last show, all the different, there's 15, now 16, different USFL names from all over the place, some from the past, some new. Uh, But now the NFL, who has taken issue with two of the XFL's names, have also taken issue with the USFL's Michigan Panthers, Broskis. I assume, and I know, that the USFL's Panthers were around way longer Michigan Panthers, I should say, been around a lot longer than the Carolina Panthers, my friends. Carolina Panthers were an expansion team. I remember when they were an expansion team. So Broski, I'd like to thank Seth Spooky Listens for giving us that tidbit on that, that information. But the NFL has taken issue with the Michigan Panthers trademark. So we'll kind of keep an eye on all these little trademark issues for you guys out there, just keeping you in the know when it comes to everything USFL.